What's up guys, welcome to the channel and welcome to another unboxing video. Okay, so this time got some more Japanese PC shooters for you, some more Japanese PC shooters, a couple of Switch games, you know, gotta, gotta get them for the Switch when you see them, right? And I got a really cool Neo Geo controller that I actually found at a local, you know, retro game store in my area. Anyway, let's check it out. Okay, first box, what could it be? I'm sure you could imagine. I honestly don't know what this is. I. So much stuff's coming here, I, I don't know. Anyway, let's take the trusty box opener and put the bottom out this biatch. See what's in here. And as always, and I always say this, like, God, every time I get something from Japan, it's just packaged so well. I mean, look at all that packaging material they use. Kind of wasteful, <laughs> kind of wasteful, but, you know, I do appreciate a good package. There's nothing like ordering a Sega Saturn game or a Sega CD game, and you open the box up and things rattle around inside the case like, oh, God, I hate that. I've had that happen with a PS4 game and the damn thing didn't work, so. Anyway, as you can see, there's Reflex at the top. That's actually part of the Altenex uh, series. There's three games. There's uh, Altenex 2nd. There's Camoe and Reflex, I believe. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments down below. But anyway, there's my copy of Reflex. I'm actually not going to open this right now, even though it is used. It's just a disc and a front insert. This is actually a CDR. This is Tails Gear. That's a game I'm going to live stream. That's a really, really, really cool game. And Bloodvane is actually in the Gundamonium series. If you guys have played the uh, Strictly Limited Games release of Gundamonium, this is actually in the series. There's several games in that series, and Plantine Dispositif, uh, just like a couple other Dojin developers, not only do shooters, but they do platformers, and I think they actually do some like RPGs, too. Now this packaging is pretty interesting. This is a, a cardboard box with a plastic insert kind of glued into it. And that's a really, really cool front cover there on Bloodvane. But yeah, Reflex, Tails Gear, and Bloodvane. Three really cool shooters I'm so happy to add to my collection. Okay, so this is really cool. So this is the collection of Mana. So there's three games in the original Mana series from what I understand. All I know is The Secret of Mana. I played it as a kid. It was probably the first action RPG I ever played in my life. But Final Fantasy Adventure, I don't remember ever playing that as a kid. I don't know that we got that released here in the United States. You know, maybe this is the first time it got released over here. I don't know. Officially, I have no idea. And the third game, that Game Boy Advance game in the Mana series, you know, I've never played that, never seen it here released in the U.S., never heard anybody talking about it. I don't know, you guys. Let me know in the comments down below. Did that first and that third game in the series get released here in the U.S.? I think I remember hearing that it didn't, and this is the first time that we're getting it um, officially released anyway. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. As you can expect, there's just a little paper insert that probably has something like a licensing agreement on it. I have no idea. Why can't they put some artwork on that little piece of paper? But as you can see behind that piece of paper, we do have reversible cover art. I do think that is pretty cool. And as a matter of fact, I think it's so cool that I'm actually going to take it out and I'm going to flip it over. Not that the other cover art looks bad i think that looks pretty awesome as well but you know in most games that i open up if you give me an option and that inside cover art looks really cool of course i'm going to take that case and flip it around so I, I think that looks pretty cool um you know it's a cart it's got the games on it i hope the games are on the cart i hope it's not like the Mega Man x collection and like one game's on the cart and you have to download the rest like oh my god that'd be horrible it's like what's the point of even making a physical cart at that point Anyway, Collection of Mana on the Nintendo Switch. Here we have another box from Japan. And what could be inside of this box from Japan? Well, more awesome doujin shooters, of course. Now, which awesome doujin shooters? I don't know. I got a bunch of stuff coming, so don't know what this could be. Have an idea. But um, actually, this particular seller, I'm starting to learn how he packages his boxes. So I'm getting pretty handy about how to run that blade around that box. So let's just get this thing cracked open and see what treasures lurk inside of this box. Okay, here we go. Should slide right open now. Okay, so okay, I know what this is. So these are two games that I ordered. This is uh, Yakuga 4 and Yakuga 6. Now these are hente uh, shoot 'em ups, and they, so they have like you know nudity in them and stuff. The best way I could describe both of these games, and they're, they're kind of they're not super risque. They're just a a little bit risque. There's some definitely more crazy stuff out there than this, but it's kind of like Steam Hearts if you guys ever played that on the, the the Sega Saturn, the PC Engine. As far as the level of you know risqueness is concerned, they, the games play totally different, other than the fact that they're shooters. Um, but yeah, Yakuga Four. They're both uh, vertically scrolling. 
they're both super awesome awesome music awesome sprite work and i will say this out of the two games i was really excited to play uh, yakuga 6 because i haven't found that game available for download anywhere unless it's on steam but i, I doubt steam would allow these games to actually be on their platform but anyway that's yakuga 4 um you know, it's just a, a disc. It's probably like a CDR with the game on it, which is completely acceptable in this type of thing and collecting for this type of thing because that's what it was. Okay, and this is Yakuga 6. This is the game I was really excited to play. Now, this particular game, I, I want to say it kind of plays like uh, Epscaluda and Esprade a little bit, you know, which are, you know, cave games. This is not a cave game. Um, but the development circle, it kind of made, I, I, I feel like they took some inspiration from both of those games when they made this. I could be completely wrong about that. It's just the graphical style and some of the, there's a, there's a, a minor hint of, of gameplay mechanic from, from F. Scaluda and S. Parade in Yakuga 6. And I feel like it is. If you know anything about any of these games I'm talking about, you know, please feel free to comment down below. I would love to get into a conversation with you about these games. But I'm just super excited to add them to my collection, especially Yakuga 6, because again, I couldn't find it online. That's Yakuga 4 and Yakuga 6 on the PC. All right, here we have Astral Chain, an unboxing of Astral Chain. What is inside of this Astral Chain box? You know, honestly, I don't know why I'm doing a video on this. It, I, obviously, it's just a cart, a case, and that's pretty much it. Some cellophane wrapping it together. And maybe there's some DLC, a code that, you know, I haven't really seen that a lot lately with the Switch or with the PS4. I feel like all the DLC gets zapped to the system when you throw the disc in, which is great, but it sucks for long-term preservation. Just put all the stuff on the disc or the cart, man. Like, what are we going to do in 20 years? We can't, it's going to be hard to collect this stuff when you need a patch for the game to be deemed playable. Anyway, enough about that. Here we go with Astral Chain. Well... That's some pretty cool inside artwork. I wouldn't say it's a reversible case, but it's some you know inner art. I think that's pretty cool. It looks cool. Heard a lot about this game. Heard good things. Heard bad things. I am really, really interested to play this game and give you guys my thoughts on it. Anyway, that's Astral Chain on the Nintendo Switch. And here we have another box from, you guessed it, it's from Japan, but inside of this box, we do not have Dojin shooters. Well, at least not PC ones anyway. This is actually a PS1 game, and this is a PS1 shoot 'em up that I just recently learned about. And it's kind of weird because this is not a game that I have seen on any type of, um, you know, lists or PS1 shooter lists, you know, whether they be NTSCU, NTSCJ PAL. Um, you know, I'm sure it is on some type of list out there. And yeah, I'm sure there are some people talking about this game. But, you know, when I saw the screenshots and gameplay footage for this game, it kind of reminded me of, like, a cave game. And, I, you know, I was like, huh. Then I looked it up, and there was, a, there was a $17 one on eBay. So that's the one I jumped on. It was 17 bucks shipped. So, anyway, you guys want to know what game it is? I know you do. I'm excited to play it. <laughs> okay. Packaged really well. This isn't from my normal guy that I get my games from from Japan either. It's from a guy I got my stuff on eBay, and the packaging looks identical, which is kind of crazy. And you know, these Japanese sellers, they always like to leave thank you notes. You know, I think they really value your, their feedback. You know, I value my feedback when I sell on eBay. I try to leave little notes too, but they always put these little stickers and stuff on there. They all do it. I really appreciate it. That's why I order my stuff from Japan. Plus, that's all for all the good games, all right. Okay, so what is this game I've been talking about for like two minutes? Okay, so this is a game called Tutaniki. I believe that's how it's pronounced. If I'm wrong about that, please let me know in the comments down below. Now, from what I've played of this game through an emulator, it seems like to really enjoy this game, you need some type of rapid fire option on your controller, you know, turbo or whatever. Um, you know, because it's one of those games without it, I think you have to keep tapping the button and that is a pet peeve of mine and a shoot 'em up, you know. That might have worked when you're playing Asteroids and, you know, Galaga back in the arcade in, like, 1981, but, you know, from, like, 1988, 89 up to 2019, which is when this video is being made, like, we need that auto-fire, that rapid-fire, you know, integrated in the regular controller, you know, we need that. As long as I'm holding the button down, the, the, the gun's going to keep firing, right? This game doesn't have that, at least from what I've played, you know. If, if you know anything about that in this game, please let me know in the comments down below. But I'm sure I'll learn to deal with it. This is a $17 shooter, and yes, it is complete. A complete version of this game apparently has this big poster inside of it. 
you know, I would have bought it even if it didn't have it, but I think that's really cool that I got this game complete and it did come with a poster. And it's got that early PS1 Japanese and like PAL, I think, did this packaging where there's actually like a manual and then there's a little paper, paper insert in front of the manual in the case itself. That way if you lose the manual, it still looks complete. Anyway, that is two Taniki on the PlayStation 1, or yeah, PlayStation 1. I played on PlayStation 2 though. This is the Neo Geo controller I got. Now, I got this at a local retro game store in my area called Regen. I saw it in there before. I told him, like, look, I'm coming back for that because I still have my Neo Geo CD, and I had no idea that these, like, bean controllers were made for the Neo Geo CD. Did they have any bean controllers, which is what this controller was named, the bean controller. Did they have any controllers like this that were released for the AES? Let me know in the comments down below. They wanted, a, I think, 70 for this. And I all trade, you know, games in my trunk, traded them in. As a matter of fact, I still have $6 store credit at their store, which is awesome. And that's Regen in White Marsh, Maryland. They get awesome stuff in. It blows me away sometimes, the stuff they get in. They got a copy of Macross Scramble Valkyrie right now for 70 bucks. If any of you guys want that game, go there and get it. It's in White Marsh, Maryland. I'll let you know right now, I bought it at a convention not that long ago. I paid 100 for my copy. So they got it for 70 jump on it first come first serve because I've never seen that game in a retro game store anyway this is the bean controller I know you guys can't hear that but it's real clicky the thing feels good now I still have one of my original AES controllers and this thing feels way better um, you know I cannot wait to throw this thing on my Neo Geo CD and play you know some like Sonic Wings 2 or some Polestar but anyway that is the Neo Geo bean controller for the Neo Geo CD so what did you guys think? I feel like I got some pretty decent stuff this time. That Neo Geo controller is pretty awesome. But, you know, I think that every time I do some type of pickups or unboxing video. Anyway, so something I've been thinking about, you know, what should I do with my YouTube channel? You know, I'm obviously going to keep talking about video games, but, you know, should I focus on you know, making edited, you know, top five, top ten videos? Because you guys seem to like those. They're, or sometimes they seem to be controversial, which is always fun. Or should I focus on doing reviews and showcasing more, you know, Dojin shooters? And I'm not just talking about, you know, doing a live stream. I'm talking about making an edited video about some of these Dojin shooters that I feel like, you know, deserve the console port now, you know, or back when it was released. You know, some of these games were so good back in like 2004, 2005 that I'm like, God, how come this game didn't get ported over to like the GameCube or to the PlayStation 2? Because over in Japan, you know, some of those games, they did get ported. We just, we didn't get them out here. You know, I mean, sometimes we're seeing, you know, with the way things are today with the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch, like we are seeing a lot more really obscure stuff getting ported over to those systems. And I'm very grateful for that. But, you know, some of them are so good and just nobody talks about them. So when I find out about them, trust me, I'm going to share them with you guys. So, yeah, that's just been on my mind. You know, what should I do with my YouTube channel? Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Oh, and before I go, I do want to do some shout outs and you know, talk about some YouTube channels that I really appreciate. And, you know, people interact with me, um, you know, gaming off the grid. You know, I really appreciate you mentioning me as your YouTube channel of the month. That means the world to me. Thank you so much. You know, Linda, a.k.a. The Gamer Girl, uh, Dat Game Collector, uh, Intrigue Gaming, Saramaru. I mean, there's so many, you know, great YouTubers out there that really help form this community. And, you know, I'm just grateful to add my little piece into the community. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video. And if you like awesome video games, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Till next time, guys. Peace out.